EPA to believe meteorologist Bobby Marcha here with your outlook for the weekend, July 24th and 25th, 2021. Today's video forecast is sponsored by Bozergeist Brewing Company in Easton, Pennsylvania. They are the proud sponsor of the weekend forecast video now for about three months and uh, sponsor every single weekend video. They are at 1250 Simon Boulevard in Easton, very close to Lafayette College, and uh, are fine purveyors of craft beer. Uh, speaking of craft beer, that was a good day the last couple days. It was a great great days just to sit outside and enjoy even if you're not into beer anything wine uh iced tea i don't know whatever uh you know it was a, it was a very nice day uh each of the last two days with lower humidity uh temperature generally the lower 80s now we are going to take a step forward in both categories today but nothing crazy humidity is going to go up a little bit uh but there is uh an increase in temperatures about you know two three degrees something like that from what we saw on uh, on friday so a little bit of an increase there, but still partly to mostly sunny today, expected across the region. Clouds were going to increase this evening, though. We have a warm front that's going to be pushing through the region. Uh, could talk up a few showers, mainly after midnight for some areas. And uh, it's very light showers, not a real big deal. It's going to be when you're sleeping, unless you work night shift, okay? Or you're partying late, you know. Uh, just a few light showers, maybe watch the ground, that's about it, okay? Uh, then we get to Sunday. Uh, we do have an opportunity for... Isolated to widely scattered thunderstorms on Sunday uh, afternoon and evening. But when I say isolated to widely scattered, it means I don't expect a lot of coverage of this. Okay, and, and the global models are not suggesting that. That's what's shown here. Uh, neither is the NAM. Okay, so here's the uh, NAM high res future simulated radar. And this is looking at uh, a composite reflectivity. Just I had to go to composite here just so I could show you uh, how, because this is so light, it's not even picking it up on the one kilometer above ground level reflectivity, which I usually use. This is a composite reflectivity, just to show you how light this is. This is kind of spotty. Lightest color of green there is, and it's very spotty. And uh, this is midnight, so we move this forward from that, this is tonight. Uh, moving forward from here, you can see a few showers. We're rotating across, uh, you know, between midnight and about 6 a.m. or so, and that's out of here, okay? Then we get to Sunday. Now, this is, uh, this is 10 o'clock in the morning. You have a line of very broken line of showers and perhaps maybe some thunderstorms with it, okay? And that's going to move off to the south and east. And the NAM has it dissipating early in the afternoon. Is it 1 o'clock? Here's 2. And you see it's already falling apart. Here's 3. And it kind of goes away. That is like a prefrontal trough feature, okay? And then the actual cold front is back here. And that tries to bring through another little bit of uh, round of showers or, or maybe a thunderstorm here. Uh, this is looking at 9 p.m., so this is kind of late, and then it runs out of time and space, and it, that's it. It goes away, okay? So if I had to draw an area, and I'm going to try to do this a second time. This is actually the second time recording this video, because I got to this point of the video when I'm discussing everything, and my mouse died. <laughs> right in the middle of drawing. So we're going to hope this works again this time. And here it is. If I'm going to draw an area, it would be northwest of this line. Normally, normally I say I-95, uh, but I think it's going to be up in these areas right here, okay? And you might have it, you know, good, it worked. It didn't die on me this time. So normally we have, uh, we use uh, I-95 as a line of demarcation. It's going to be a little bit further northwest than that, probably about 25, 30 miles northwest of I-95. And all points northwest are the threat areas for a thunderstorm. And I don't think we're dealing with severe, severe weather. Another storm prediction center has a marginal risk out. Uh, I doubt it. Uh, it could be something very, very isolated. And it would be a wind threat if it, if it is, but I just don't see it being a big deal right now. I just don't. Uh, looks like it's going to be maybe early afternoon. If you have two separate lines like that, like the name suggests, you'll have an early afternoon threat, uh, maybe like a noon to two or three. Okay. And then you have another threat, uh, kind of like uh, seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. Okay. If the, if, with the cold front, but in either case, it, it looked like mostly garden, garden variety stuff might have a little gusty winds with it, but I just don't think it's going to be a severe weather day. Uh, it's lacking a lot of forcing, and, and the global models are suggesting that too. It really is not a lot here sir, for, for Sunday. Uh, behind that here for Monday, the cold front's going to move very slowly to the south and east, and it'll be very close to our southeastern region. So for the, our southeastern regions only, Monday you have an isolated thunderstorm chance as well, but the rest of us will be, be uh, becoming partly cloudy as that front considers uh, can, continues off to the south and east. So uh, you might start off with some clouds in the morning, then it becomes partly cloudy. We're going to remain hot, though. Uh, temperatures here, Sunday, 86 to 89. We're probably going to be, uh, as we get to Monday, we're probably going to be in that uh, 87 to 90, 91-ish range and kind of remain there for a couple days uh, all the way up through Wednesday. 
So here's Tuesday, back to mostly sunny skies again, in and around the upper 80s to near 90 degrees for a high. And then once we get to uh, Wednesday, we're going to be in a northwest flow aloft. So once we get into next week, the, a northwesterly flow is going to take over. And that's what it looks like here on the ensembles. Big ridge out here in the Intermountain West and Western Plains. So a big ridge building here. If you look up here, though, we are in a northwesterly flow that's coming right over top of our region. Northwesterly flow aloft. At the same time, though, the winds, uh, the winds at the surface are westerly. So what does that mean? Well, uh, it does mean you have an opportunity for uh, a quick, for quick moving systems. So any cold fronts or mid-level disturbances or anything like that, like we're expecting Wednesday, a mid-level disturbance, is going to be very quick in and out. Okay, it could produce some thunderstorms as it moves through. Quick in and out here on Wednesday. Same thing here on Thursday with a cold front. Quick in and out. It's not going to be hung up at all. Okay, everything moves very fast. And with a westerly wind, you get some downsloping of the mountains, which keeps the temperatures high. And temperatures will definitely be high. Upper 80s near 90. But the humidity is not ridiculous. It's not going to be out of the south or southwest, which gives you that really soupy atmosphere. So I don't expect it to be overly humid. Will be a little humid? Yeah, but it's not going to be crazy. Okay? So I don't expect any heat headlines from the National Weather Service next week of... You know, excessive heat warnings or heat advisories or anything like that, because they just don't think the humidity will be high enough to warrant that uh, next week. But we'll see how that works out. It looks out uh, when you have an upper level um, flow out of the northwest like that, you can have these fast moving disturbances like shown here that could give you some scattered thunderstorms. This is just a weak mid level disturbance moving through here on Wednesday. Once you get to Thursday, you have another one moving through. One of these will have to be watched though for uh, a mesoscale convective system potentially developing. Uh, Thursday is a cold front, but if you can get a, a mesoscale convective system running across the Great Lakes here, uh, you could have some pretty nasty, severe weather. So we're going to watch that Wednesday, Thursday time frame, I think especially Thursday, all right, for some potential for some severe weather. Uh, again, that northwesterly flow is going to help aid in that a little bit. And then once we get to the end of the week next week on Friday, things clear out, get partly cloudy, and temperatures drop slightly uh, from what they were of just a few days ago. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchus. That is your outlook for the weekend, July 24th and 25th, 2021. Have a great Saturday and Sunday.